Extreme View is a single pane of glass remote management user interface used in configuration, monitoring, and management of Addo storage controller products. Please refer to the manual of your Extreme Core device for the default login credentials. The manual can be found in PDF format at addo.com forward slash support. Please note it is best practice to change these credentials after the initial login. Please refer to the product manual for the most up-to-date procedure and requirements for the login credentials. Once logged in, we can see the status page, which gives an overview of the current settings applied to your Extreme Core. In the panel on the left side of the screen, we can navigate to the Ethernet tab. This is where you can adjust settings for the data ports and management ports. Under time and date, this is where you can set SNTP settings amongst other settings. The remote management tab is where you can adjust the DNS server address, SNMP configuration, and email configuration. The iSCSI configuration tab will show the iSCSI alias, which will assign a human readable name to the system. Aliases may be 1 to 64 characters in length. The manual target management tab is where you'll begin to map devices, as well as adjust settings for access control, access entry, iSCSI chap, amongst other settings. The controller tab will show you environmentals and username and password information. This is where you can assign a new password to your Extreme Core as well as a username and see some information about operating temps, minimum, maximum alerts, and things like that. Certificate management tab displays or sets the attributes used to generate the HTTPS certificate. The Firmware Update tab is where you can go to load a new firmware downloaded from addo.com's support page. The Advanced CLI Configuration tab will allow the input of many of the CLI commands available to the Extreme Core. Just enter Help for a list of available commands. The Restart tab will restart your Extreme Core device. And the Help tab will provide information for online help as well as where to contact tech support. First, log into the Extreme View web interface using the IP address discovered or configured in the previous video. It is recommended that the Extreme Core 8200 is used on an isolated physical lossless network when using iSCSI. Spanning Tree Protocol, or STP, should be disabled on the switch ports being used for iSCSI traffic. This would mean ports connected to the 8200 and each iSCSI initiator. If you do need STP enabled, it is recommended that you enable the STP fast port feature on your switch. Please contact your IT administrator for more information. Click the Ethernet tab in the left sidebar. Under the Ethernet tab is where we can begin configuring both data ports. Please note that it is best practice to disable DHCP for the data ports. Please note, when using both data ports on the 8200, they must be on independent subnets in order to achieve optimal performance and reliability. In this example, we will use the IP address 10.198.125.186. We will leave the IP gateway at its default and we will set the subnet mask to 255.255.0.0. Here we can adjust the ethernet speed to auto-negotiate or set to 10 or 40 gigabit. And we can also set the MTU size for standard or jumbo frames. Once your settings have been configured, click Submit. In this example, we'll be configuring two data ports. So on data port two, we'll disable DHCP and we'll enter IP address 10.197.125.186. Take note that data port 2 has been assigned a different subnet than data port 1. The gateway will remain at the default and the subnet mask will be 255.255.00. Once your settings have been configured, click submit and your data port has been configured. 
If you would like to manually set the management port, you can disable DHCP and set the IP address, gateway, and subnet mask accordingly. Next, we will map devices to the Extreme Core 8200. Once logged in, navigate over to the Manual Target Management tab. And here we can configure the iSCSI targets. There is a default and an already assigned iSCSI target. The default will show any devices that were attached to the 8200 prior to it being powered on. In this case, we have a SAS JBOD attached to the 8200 so we can see the various hard drives that are installed in that JBOD. And if we toggle over to that SAS JBOD that was automatically discovered by the 8200, we can see the devices that are already mapped on the left hand side and on the right hand side any unmapped devices. Now to map a new device, you simply drag an unmapped device from the right side into the left hand column. And if you'd like to unmap a device, you simply do the reverse. You drag the device from the left hand column to the right. And press submit. And now your new devices have been mapped. Now if we want to create an entirely new iSCSI target, we give it a name. In this case, we'll call it test. That will create the new iSCSI target. And now we need to map devices to it. So under test, we will click device maps. And we can see the controller of the SAS JBOD already mapped as well. And we can drag over hard drives that are in that SAS JBOD to map them to that new iSCSI target. Press submit once done. And your devices have been mapped.